It has only been two days since we lost Kenji and we are still reeling with that. We are still grieving that, but we do have a very, very busy week. This is a bunch of stuff that was planned months in advance. So we are picking ourselves up by the bootstraps and we're going to have a good productive week. Yeah, a lot going on here this week. I want to thank you guys for uh, all of the positive outreach and all of the well wishes that you sent our way with everything that we have going on here. Really, really appreciate it. But with picking up and moving on and uh, working toward getting, getting stuff done around here, like I said, very, very busy week. We have painters that are here today. They are actually upstairs right now, already putting some primer up. This place is gonna look totally different by the end of this week because we also have an additional project, a very exciting install, something that I'm really looking forward to. So very busy, very exciting week ahead. All right, so everything upstairs has now been primed. Their plan, they said, is to get everything primed today and then we'll get paint up tomorrow. We're gonna to be using the same May May's paint color that we use in the house. It's kind of a warm white, which should match all the wood detail that we're gonna have in here really well. So looking forward to that. These guys are making really quick progress, quick work things, and it's looking really good. It looks so good just with the primer. So I love the little accent wall too, that added a lot, but the texture now is almost, it's basically almost disappeared. So it just adds a little bit of roughness. I know that that splatter look on the drywall scared a lot of you guys, but it looks nice now. We knew because in the house we had the exact same texture and we really liked it. Since there isn't very much for us to do back home, they are just getting all of that primer on and they are getting ready to wrap up their day. We figured we would jump in the car, head into town and pick out our cabinet colors and our door colors and everything else because we didn't realize that when we organized everything and had everything drawn out that we didn't actually pick a color. Oops. Yeah, so the cabinets are supposed to be made very soon and they were like, we have no idea what color you guys want. So we're gonna head over there we're going to get it all squared away and then we will be back and then the painters will be back tomorrow to start getting the actual paint on. After looking at all my colors, we decided that we like their colors. So we're actually going to do the doors and trim in the same circles on finish and the same color. It's gonna be like this for all of the free edge shelving and the beams and the trim, pretty much everything except for the lower cabinets and the vanity. So that we're gonna go with this espresso finish, which I realize is really dark, don't freak out. I want to go really dark because it's just base cabinets and then we're going to put bright cream countertops on top, which are gonna match the walls, so it's gonna brighten it all up. I think it's gonna look really sharp. I'm excited. All right, looks good, we're organized. Pick colors. While Melissa and I were in town, the painters continued on with getting everything primed, including the entire stairwell up above me here and all of the garage, which makes a world of difference. This place is much brighter than we are accustomed to, and I feel like it makes things look bigger. Yeah, well, right? I, yeah, it's just everything, everything looks beautiful. It makes me want to keep it bright white. So tomorrow they will be back getting our warm white up on the walls. We'll see what that does, but really exciting to see. Love the progress, and uh, we're one step closer to having Gabby wrapped up and completed. This morning the paint is going on the addition, but the doors are masked off so we can't sneak in there and see what's going on. If they take a break, we'll go in there and look around, but if not, we'll see it at the end of the day. So since we are locked out of the build today, we have a project of our own. We're going to call the kids out here because we have a project that is a huge priority to us, something that's going to honor Kenji. This week when we lost Kenji, we needed to bury him right away for obvious reasons. And so when we buried him, it's just a mound of dirt and it's not really what we want it to look like. So we want Kenji to have a spot in the garden, in the orchard that honors his life and is a nice, pretty spot. So we went and got some, it's two by twelves, right? Two by tens, I think is what we're two using. Two by tens. <laughs> so we got some two by tens. We wanted to kind of match the garden. We're going to build him a little box. And then our goal is just to fill that 
with soil and then let the kids plant wildflowers or something that's going to be beautiful and pretty that they can visit. Yeah, we also got them a headstone, so we're going to stick that over there. And then uh, eventually here, I might be doing some additional things just to really tidy up the area. We'll maintain it, kind of like I explained before, and we'll keep it nice and clean to make sure we honor his memory properly, like Melissa mentioned. So uh, we're going to get to work on that. We'll get everything moved over and uh, make sure we take care of things. All right, Jeremy is continuing to screw the box together and I'm taking a, a little break. Um, this has been a really interesting week because I honestly thought that I would handle this a lot better than I have. I I do really well when I forget and, and then life just kind of goes on and we're happy and we're laughing and um, there's just these little moments of remembering and this project in particular, not because of the nature of what the project is, but because of the fact that he's not there and every time that we would come out and work, he would lay there and there's this spot right between the two doors where he laid all the time and you always could find Kenji there. And then when he's not there today, it was just kind of like this little moment of remembering. So I'm going to, it's, it's gonna be fine and I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, get over this, but um, we will always love and miss Kenji and um, there's gonna be a lot of these little moments. We went ahead and got our box screwed together and then added these black ornate corner brackets just to make sure that things are really solid. Plus it makes it look good and we wanna make sure that uh, Kenji has a nice planting box over him. So we're gonna get this moved over, fill it up with soil. We'll let the kid, kids uh, plant some wildflowers that we picked up and make things look real nice and pretty for them. And then we're kind of pressed on time. I'd like to add a cross at uh, one end of this box, maybe put his name on it. I'm gonna take some time to do that just so it's not rushed and I can do a good job. But uh, we'll get this moved over and wrap this project up. There's a light that's shining down. All right, I think we're good. You guys wanna grab some soil for me? From above. And it's over me now. Y'all can rock it. Alright, the painters just got out of here. They wrapped up all their work. So that beautiful mayonnaise, that warm white color that we're so accustomed to, it's the same thing that we have in house, like we mentioned. It's up on the walls, up on the ceiling. And this place is looking almost finished, which is amazing to say. It made a world of difference. I'm so happy with how it turned out. Yes, almost finished, but not quite finished because Jeremy really, really wants garage flooring. So we're going to let the paint dry for 24 hours. And then we've got project number two happening here in just one day. Living out here in the mountains, we have some pretty unpredictable weather year round, but regardless, rain, shine, sun, sleet, snow, hail, we are out here every single day doing chores or just playing. You guys may have noticed that over the past month, I have basically been living in two pairs of shoes and so have the kids. And that's because this spring, I bought everyone two pairs of Vessi shoes. We got the Stormburst low tops and my favorite, the weekend sneakers. I was so tired of our feet becoming soaked while filling up water buckets, going on hikes, or simply walking through damp grass that I wanted to get something that was going to be comfortable and stylish for everyday wear, but also 100% waterproof. The everyday sneaker is so cute and casual and comfy, but it can also totally work when you're getting dressed up as well. The Stormburst low tops we got for our more adventurous 
most days, hiking, playing on the beach, or just running around the property. I love that they just slip on and they can easily be hosed off even while you're wearing them. The nice thing about Vessi is they are also totally breathable so your feet don't get all sticky on hot days, but they also stay nice and warm during the winter. And since Vessi shoes are built for adventure, they definitely get dirty. So my Stormbirth low tops went from looking like this to looking like this with one wash. And next I need to work on Eli's because he has absolutely been living in these things. These are the first shoes that I have found that will actually get him out of his cowboy boots. So if you're looking to elevate your summer activities, try the Vessi Stormburst and Weekend Shoes. Discover more at Vessi.com slash Good Simple Living. Get your pair today to get an automatic 15% off your first pair at checkout and get ready to stay cool and dry. I haven't been this excited for a project in quite a long time. We have a crew that is about to show up here onto the property to lay down some polyurea garage floor coating. This is top of the line, premium stuff. It should be very durable and keep our garage looking safe and clean for quite a long time. If you can look safe. <laughs> it's going to be so safe. You know what I mean. yeah. Jeremy has researched this project for a long time. This is his garage. This is his project. Right. I don't know a lot about it, so I'm going to be learning about it today. So maybe I'm full grown, but I don't feel older yet. Maybe I'm too young to want to get older yet. Maybe I'll face it. Good, but I'm still on the charm. Awesome. Right. Tan black and white. Yeah. We're gonna step away from the noise for a second here. So our crew has gotten started with grinding our concrete flooring down. They have that big 900 pound grinder to get that done as well as a, uh, just some hand tools. So that should help with adherence between the polyurea coating that's going down and the concrete itself. Because concrete is a porous material, apparently the polyurea has a way of actually working itself into the concrete, which should also help with adherence. Hopefully we don't have any kind of chipping or peeling issues. Regardless, we have a 15 year warranty to fall back on. A lot of the research that I did ahead of time with some of the DIY kits that you can pick up at like your local box store, apparently doesn't work out so well. I wanted to make sure that we did this right the first time, which is why we have this great crew out here getting all the work done. All right, so our grinding of the garage flooring is done. How'd that go? Uh, slower than normal. Slower, slower than, than normal. normal, but we brought the proper tools to get that done. Yeah, we're uh, happy about that. So what is the purpose for actually grinding the surface of the concrete? Uh, well, you got a brand new slab there, less than a year old, but the way that was laid down is called hard trowel. Mm -hmm. The cream that you use to mix concrete rises to the surface and yep. creates kind of a barrier like its own natural sealer it. our material it needs to penetrate the pores in order to grab hold of the calcium and concrete right. to bind properly so we got to open those up before we can lay the product down okay we can lay it down the way it was but it might last six months to a year before you start seeing little peeling chipping places got it so we just don't like to take any chances and clean it all up okay so that was ground down everything was cleaned up what's the next step in the process here uh, normally we'd clean up any repairs, but you got a nice slab here. So we're actually gonna start mixing up the, the color base coat, which is also a self primer. And then we're gonna start laying the uh, colored flakes on top of that as we go. Very cool, very exciting. What do you think? Looks a lot better than it did. It, well, it's not done yet. It just grounded everything down. You like those shoes? No? The spikes? No. So this is the sample, it is called Shoreline. That's the color that we picked. So that's what it will look like when it's all down only over a much larger surface. So what is the difference between this product and one that you would buy at Home Depot, like one that you would do yourself? So the one that you're gonna do yourself is gonna be an epoxy product. And that one is what's sitting on top of the concrete versus making a chemical blend into the concrete. So ours being polyurea is gonna blend and make a chemical adhesion into the concrete. So basically just, it's not gonna peel and it's not gonna crack like some of the products that you can do yourself. Correct, correct. So one of the benefits about the polyurea in our areas with the expansion and the contraction due to the freeze and thaw cycles mm -hmm. for the concrete, um, this is actually, since it's making a chemical blend into the concrete, it's not sitting on top of it. So the motion is not gonna cause it to delaminate. Also 
also the de-icers and the salts that we use on our roads are not going to eat through the pump. I've got to try out the spikes. You want to wear those, don't you? I want to wear the spiked clogs. Also, I love the noise it makes. <laughs> hey, weird question. Can I try your spiked shoes on? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Here, okay. Slip on my Crocs. So let's see what it feels like to be a little taller. Go ahead. I'm not going to really work out so well in your, in your sandals. I'll take them off. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, you can hear you want. Yeah. You look good. <laughs> Six foot three is legit this time. <laughs> so you guys are getting that polyurea base coat down, correct? Correct. And they are also starting to broadcast some of those chips along the back corner as they go. They're using a squeegee to get all this down, spread out, and also rolling it as well. It's making a huge difference already, especially with those chips. What are those chips made out of? The uh, flake? Just vinyl. Vinyl chips. Vinyl chips. Okay. Yeah, so adding those is really brightening things up in here. Happy with how it looks. They're making very quick progress. Love the way that things are going so far. You guys saw that polyurea base coat that was put down. They went ahead and covered that up with those vinyl chips. Really heavy layer of those vinyl chips, which is good. That's something that was really important to me to make sure that we had full coverage of not only the floor, but the uh, vertical upright portions near our sidewalls. I really like the color of those chips. It kind of reminds me of sand at the beach in Hawaii. So of course, I would love that. They're going to cover all of that up with their final top coat layer of a polyaspartic, which has been explained to me is offering up a lot of UV protection. This is the stuff that we're going to be walking and driving on, so it should offer some serious durability as well. At least that's the hope. We're going to see what this project looks like all wrapped up. I'm so excited to have this done. It's been on my mind, something I've wanted for a really, really long time. So the guys are back here getting that final top coat put down. It's changing the color just slightly, making it a little darker, but it's also more vibrant at the same time, if that makes sense. It's giving it that nice showroom finish. So we're wrapped up for the day. It was an amazing one day install. Things turned out awesome. I'm happy with it. I think they're happy with it. Yeah. All good. Love it. Couldn't be more impressed. Uh, love the end result. Very, very happy. My dream garage is coming together. <laughs> dream garage. Well, this was an incredible day. It looks beautiful. Jeremy was right. I wasn't totally sure if it was Wait, something what? that we should have done. Jeremy was right. It looks fantastic. It looks beautiful and it's going to hold up really well. It really does. It's amazing how far we've come in this process. We are so grateful to the folks over at Croc Coatings. They're a local company. They came out here. They were very communicative. They did a great job with the actual install. And then if anybody out there is interested in doing something similarly, this is a Pentec product. They are nationwide. Um, again, couldn't be happier with the result. This should last us a beautiful. really long time. It looks great. Should be very durable. Just so happy. So grateful. This is amazing. This week was all about moving forward, keeping our chins up, and seeking out joy. We were reminded last week that life is but a breath. And it can't always be about just working for the happy ending. The endings aren't where the joy lies. 
Life is about living every single day in the middle for a purpose and going after those passions at every chance you get. It should be a beautiful adventure where you limp to the finish line with a lifetime of dirt and bruises and stories to tell.